Welcome on to another movie review from MBE. We'd just like to thank you once again for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Of course, our Twitch stream, I'm one of your co-hosts, Stephen John McLaughlin. Our other co-host, John C. Walsh, is here too. And we are here to talk about Donkey. It's our third venture into an SRK movie. And they're all from the same year, of course. We did Patan and we did Jawan. Yeah. And now we've moved on to Donkey. John. Donkey. Um, I know we'll get into it. Um, I know that obviously uh, we're not doing this live, as you can gather, no. f- folks, because we're a little bit behind because of copyright with the first episode. So we thought we would just pre-record it. So it's not live, it's not interactive, but perhaps this will go premiere and we can... That's say that. It's still interactive. The, we can do the interactive chat. It's nearly live. Yeah. And still interactive. But don't expect us as video people to be to responding be, to yes. that. One of no. us will be on the chat, maybe two of us. We'll yes. be there as well. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to hand it over blah, to blah, you blah, now, John. Blah, 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 blah. this review experience. Yes, yeah, Stephen, we normally talk about the promotional stuff in the lead up to the film and reacting to it, the general buzz, mm. but I don't feel like that's quite necessary this time because no. we didn't really enjoy the promotional stuff relating to this film. Oh. Um, there was way too many donkey drops. Just convoluted. The, num- the, the sort of naming setup wasn't great at all for yeah. me. Um, it was a slightly underwhelming promotional push. And, and the uh, words of t- Travelling Wilburys overexposed and commercialised. Exactly, Stephen. <laughs> it just felt like it yeah. was flying under the radar. Shahrut Khan, but no one seemed to really realise that it was Shahrut Khan. And indeed, that this was a movie of his. Perhaps you should go and watch. Uh, and you look at the Rotten Tomato score, it's doing very well critically. You look at the IMDB score, it's doing very well, reasonably well critically. I think the box office was pretty decent, 470.6 crores, so it's not underperformed, but yeah. I don't know, it just felt like it wasn't on the scale of Joanne or Patan. Yeah. And maybe it was people just again getting burnt out from SRK, free movies John, and his return from this hiatus. Yeah. I, c- I, can, I, can, I can compare it to Western standards in terms of the same sort of pattern that played with the cable guy. Yeah. We had... Liar, Liar, Mask and Dumb and Dumber. And on the oh, back of them, then we had, all, was, we had Cable Guy. And a lot performed well at the box office. And it's become of a bit of a cult classic. Um, it just it didn't fit sort of mould at the time. It didn't yeah. fit what people's expectations were at the time. I think because Patan and Joanne were similar in, in genre, uh, different in story, but similar in genre, um, this was... Tonally going to be different, and I know we're going to talk about tones as well in this film, John. Um, well, I mean, Stephen, I think that's a good well. conduit into yeah. the actual review, then, because you're right, it's a totally different movie to Joanne and Patan. It's not a big out and out bombastic action spectacle where he's playing two, three variants of himself. This is a much more grounded story about real gritty human stuff that's happening in the world just now, even literally as we were watching the second part of this. News had broke that day that people had tragically lost their lives in the North Sea yeah. trying to get to the shores of Britain on a sort of dinghy or something, wow. on a boat, and it capsized. So this is something that's hard hitting, and it's reality for... I don't know how many people are trying to emigrate into the European Union or the United thousands. Kingdom, but yeah. I want to say it's yeah. thousands, tens yeah. of thousands every year trying to do it. So this is a real <clears throat> hard hitting story. That is, yeah. Totally different to those previous two movies and perhaps that's why there wasn't as much of a sort of anticipation or mania surrounding the movie but Stephen that aside I really enjoyed this film um, yeah. on a sort of basic level if you want to just sit and watch this and then bugger off if you don't want to stay with us for the next lord knows how long this is going to be <laughs> I really enjoyed this film yeah John, um, um, I don't I, think it's quite as good as Joanne was I think no, that's still I, my favourite SRK yeah, movie of it's, the last year it's apples and oranges isn't it but yeah it's a different beast I think um, I've already watched our first two sort of watch alongs and I know the third one's still to be released as we record this but um, tonally in our reaction you can see as well so the, fir- the first part is more of a sort of coming of, coming of age sort of adventure the second one John which dropped today as we record this Steve, you know. were in tears of laughter I did not know so, what to do with yeah. the thumbnail though yeah, was, because you've yeah. got the Vicky Cashel character is it Suki I think his Suki, name was yeah. Fucking tragically kills himself when he learns of the death of, is it Jazzy? I think he's bride who wasn't to be, who was obviously wooed away to London. Yeah. And then was being abused by her husband in a foreign land. He was desperately trying to get there. 
and save her and bring her back home to India, he lights himself on fire. In that sort of one hour snippet of the film we were watching at that point. And then like 20 minutes earlier, you've got this test and they're all tripping over themselves and getting destroyed by these testers. One guy gets away, the guy with the haircut who becomes a sort of mannequin. I think it's Barry. Just looking at the names there, but the rest are just a disaster. And it's one mishap and pitfall after another. And, yeah. and it's fucking hilarious, that especially the like Hardy. John, I'm not sure. Yeah. That photo looks, looks like old. Scobie. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but Hardy's just, yeah. it's hilarious. You're right, Stephen. Laughing my head off, but I didn't know what to do with the thumbnail. Yeah. And that's this movie summed up. But you see Tonally, that? we were concerned yeah. about this yeah, film, yeah, Stephen. Yeah. In the first 45 minutes to an hour, if not more. We had real, really up until probably the death of Jazzy and Suki. If that's her name, Jazzy, I'm pretty sure it is. It was really up until that moment. We were 50 well, I can't speak for you, but I was 50 I was concerned. I'm like, I was concerned. What the fuck is going yeah. on with this film? I, it's I'm, all over the place. A, tonal. It was a, a telepathy VJ film. It was like that tonally as well. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't kind of, it didn't really save itself other than. Talapathy VJ was in it, but yeah. for this, I was. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it may have been. Um, That's one of the ones we didn't like. It, w- it just wasn't an enjoyable watch. I-, I think if you can do it right and if you can hit the ground running and then obviously stick the landing, then you know you've got a good film. But if you're going to do those sort of jumps in genre, it was, certainly was that way. And I think right up to obviously Suki uh, that moment. Um, you see the, sh- the the change in us as well. Yeah, we're, we're laughing, and uh, you know, tears of laughter at one moment, and then utter shock. And that's not a bad thing. I think the way they handled it, it wasn't mm. abrupt. It was just. I'm trying to think of a, a moment. I think it might have been Quota Factory with the suicide. Yeah, moment. they were kind of elated at the yeah. end party. Tonally, it just changed abruptly, yeah. but in a, a natural way. Yeah, like you, you get into shock. That you was know, such a great scene, Stephen, because yeah. he was high spirited. Yeah. The teacher guy was taking him on the sort of donkey trip, donkey. They were doing the donkey route into the United Kingdom. He was in high spirits. He was finally going to get to see Jazzy, potentially bring her home. He was speaking to her on the phone as he thought, skipping all along the street. Really high spirited, sort of airy, brilliant Indian music framing the whole scene and then just bang. Yeah. His facial expression. And then the whole thing changes. But I understand why the cast, Vicky Cashel. Oh yeah, that's because deep. you needed someone with that range. You because, said this with Joanne, yeah, and Trisha. Yeah, you do. You, you do. need you a know, proper actor for a moment like that. Yeah, an yeah, important Leo, moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry, Leo. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying Joanne. I'm fucking. Drunk. I think you're. I think you're right, though, John. I think you do. It's because I wanted to have a bath in Joanne. <laughs> yeah. Still you, raging you about that. You need that, though. You do need that, and, and as limited as his screen time was, and you called it. You said, "I think this is going to be a special appearance." And it was, yeah. You know, it was. It was just enough of this character we needed to trigger the rest of those characters to do what they had to do. But it was so tragic, and just Vicky Cashel was a fantastic actor, John. Um, and it was going to be interesting to see how he was going to play in a film with Sharuk Khan because I thought sometimes that doesn't work when you've got a big star, and, yeah. and Vicky Cashel in her eyes is a big star as well. Um, but the, I thought the cast across the board was very strong. I thought yeah. uh, the lady, um, I can't remember her name. Uh, yeah, Manu. Uh, uh, Tapsi, Tapsi Panu. Panu. Yeah, 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 she was fantastic. very good. Yeah. Uh, and she obviously, I don't know if she, she she's kind of, I don't know, would you say people can be equal billing in an SRK film? I'm not sure. But uh, I think uh, she held her own. Yeah. I think she definitely held her own in this film. Why and it was, so I think much? the film yeah. for the largest part was from her sort of, Perspective. She was in most of the scenes. Yeah. She she obviously she was in the introduction the, yeah. in the hospital. Um. And it's funny how we never questioned that. We never questioned her health or anything like yeah. that at the time, or, or why she was in the hospital. I think it's just because you're just. It's it's at the start. I think if it was maybe in the middle of the movie or something like that, then you question it because you're relating to the character a little bit more. But at the start, you're just it's an introduction. And it's kind of the way she escapes is get comic elements in it as well. So you're yeah. kind of distracted by that as well. No, I mean, Stephen, look what you said about obviously Vicky. For me, he is a top, top actor. Um, the movie yeah. we've seen him in, the Rhythm, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. One of the best movies we've seen from India, Hard Hitting. Great story about this sort of freedom fighter who assassinates a prominent Irish guy in the British sort of upper echelons, ruling class, political class, whatever you want to call it. 
think it was O'Dwyer. Yeah. Fucking great movie. He's a brilliant actor. That moment was fantastic, and that's why you bring a guy like that in to make that pop. Steve, what he says tonally, I mean, I'll get into Manu, uh, a brilliant character, um, in many ways the heart and soul of this movie. Yeah. Um, Hardy absolutely adores Manu. Um, he's just waiting for the moment, 25 years, to propose to her. He builds Big Ben in her house or nearby. Yeah. He's smitten by her. She's such a charismatic character. She sort of tries to rally the troops. She defends him. She defends the others. She's just ever present in this movie. It's funny, John, yeah, because she's a brilliant choice but, of actor. Manu's introduced as a, an older lady at the start of the film. Yeah, I was never it. having it. And then we do the, the flashback. How old is she? I never we get did to you. see Tap C, obviously, at her own age. Yeah. Um, for most of the film, I would say, you know, it's, yeah, we don't really revert back to present day until the sort of last half hour of the film. And when we did go back and you saw her older again, John, you made a comment. Yeah, <laughs> about her appearance, which kind of stayed with me because it was so funny. <laughs> your reaction because she's she's a she's only thirty six. She's um, fit, yeah, she's only two years old. She's a me. very nice looking uh, lady, um, yeah. but I think the makeup didn't do any justice no. for the grey hair and the sort of wrinkles. Well, she was looking terrible. Yeah, uh, she really was um, haggard like that of an old leather bag. Um, just lines everywhere. What the fuck's going on here? She was so young and vivacious and it was like 25 years. Bear in mind, folks, if anyone wants to comment at this moment on what we're saying, it's because we didn't realise she was ill. We didn't know she was yeah. ill, but even then, I mean, um, I mean, it's 25 years, eh? I'm not having that, they overdone it. It was reminiscent of the end of The Deathly Hallows Part 2 with Harry Potter uh, and obviously Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger and the, the sort of trio growing up with their kids at Platform 9 and 3 quarters and they're hand the name off for a new era of Hogwarts sort of mm. storytelling. Which we'll never see. And they are <laughs> fucking so yeah. haggard. And yeah. poor Rupert Grint in particular had a pot belly and it was just hair receding. They looked terrible. Over-egging it. I'm like, there's John, no fucking way you age that much. On the side of that, you've got the young version of SRK. Yeah. And I Jesus can't... Christ. Every film we see him in, I think we've seen... The three films we've seen him in, or maybe the two films we've seen him in, Joanne, I think, maybe, in, in this one... Um, they do a younger version of him. I, I don't think it's a younger version. I think that's just him. It's just him. You know? It's just it him just, with makeup. It's, but it's incredible. Stephen, there was a moment. It just looks, his skin's so young looking. It's you not know? just the skin, it's the hair. Yeah. There was a moment in the second part, they're in Afghanistan, I want to say. I deduced it was Afghanistan from the flag, green, white, green. Mm. They're on the train. They've just, he's just murdered those sort of soldiers. And his hair is Unbelievable. <laughs> He's sort of saying to her, look, you want a comb or a brush? You can brush your hair. doesn't matter. You look good anyway. And it kind of pans to him and he's smiling and his hair is just down, slightly matted. It's just fucking tremendous, his haircut. The guy is ridiculous for yeah. his age, man. He looks unbelievable. I don't know what age he is. I think he's about 58. Yeah, and he's late 50s. I, I think you actually did check this, to be fair. I don't think I ever did search it up. I may be talking shit. I think you... He's 58. 58. Yeah, I think he's we did 58 check it. years yeah. of age. He looks unbelievable for 58. He doesn't look 20 years older than Tapsy Panu. And that's, that's not that, me I think doing a disservice to Tapsy. I think there's an old film trick, John, they do, though, where they'll present you with the older versions. Yeah. They do them up old with grey hair, as you yeah. mentioned, and the wrinkles. So when you do revert back to the past, the, the so called pa yeah. past, not in real life, of course, but in film life. Um, they look so fresh yeah. and young, and that's that's just their natural yeah. look. Certainly, with obviously Shahrukh Khan, and uh, I knew Tapsy Paru was not yeah. that old. I'm no. gonna say right away, she's not an old person. No, no. She doesn't even remotely look fucking that age. They've made her hair grey. She looks young, and then you go to the actual flashback, and you can see right, yeah, that's what she looks like for yeah. real. And we joked about the other two prominent characters, and uh, I think it was, I don't even know the other guy's name. Buggy, yeah. Was it Buggy and think Bali? It was, yeah. I think Bally looked the exact same. Um, he yeah, just looked... He's the one that got to England, Yeah, he, got yeah. he looked the yeah. exact same. There was no Asian done yeah. on him whatsoever. Buggo's the one that's got the... the Little shorter guy. The, the yeah, trousers, the, yeah. The, yeah, the pants as he was yeah. going. <laughs> he was concerning me at one point. He was going on about his mother's pants. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? That was when I was really concerned about the tone yeah. of this movie. But Stephen, speaking about the tone, I think it was necessary at the start to have this more light-hearted, joyous, a lot of sort of... So singing and dancing going on and just introducing these characters in their natural habitat sort of trying to learn English trying to do anything they can getting conned I think they called it what did they call it again um, God, yeah, what it was, was a it? double word foo-foo yeah 
try to get into obviously England kind of legally but it's not really and it was just tonally much more light hearted than what the movie ultimately became Yeah, in the, the latter stages there was a rationale behind that because it really did introduce you to those four primary characters what I say it's four maybe the I teacher would, as well, well but primarily yeah. those four well, four and Vicky Cashel's Vicky character Vicky Cashel yeah. Yeah. yeah it bonded you with them yeah. for the first 45 50 minutes of the movie you had a real connection with them you'd spent time with them you'd seen their plight try to get in you'd seen the reasons for why they were trying to get in Barry wanted to go and provide for his family but did we say it was Booger <laughs> Booger yeah. yeah if that's his name also try to allow his mother to retire in a sense Hardy he was just trying to facilitate the rest of them and maybe right the wrongs of his tragic past not become this joker guy for the rest of his life yeah. marry Manu and live happily ever after in London obviously Manu was maybe not happily ever after but live some sort of life there Manu was also trying to get the home back we've seen the rationale for why yeah. they were trying to get there why they were giving everything and that bonds you to the characters yeah that first 45 50 minutes of the movie then when tragedy starts to hit and they start going through hard times and they've got real sort of adversity in their path it makes it all the more poignant and powerful yeah so that's why i think i mean tonally it was all over the fucking place for me but it was i think a deliberate choice it wasn't uh, yeah. all over the place it was very light-hearted yeah. and jokey and then it was very serious yeah and it was deliberate. I think it was a deliberate Still choice. Had moments of comedic levity in yeah. there, though, even in the sort of hard times as well. Um, I think um, in terms of um, moments in the film as well, John, maybe that's something that we can talk about now. There's, there's yeah. some key moments in there. Some, as you said, are quite emotional. Some are quite funny. Yeah. Um, and there's some good sequences in there as well. One of them probably as a standout is from the sort of first half of the film is the underwater scenes. Which oh I thought, yeah, I thought oh, Steve, that was really, shot. really tense moment as well, wasn't it? But that shot when they've been fired that and they all seem to survive unscathed and yeah. they're all holding hands walking under the water, that was it's a really... It's of them as well when yeah. they're out of the water, you know, bloodshot yeah. eyes and their skin's all, yeah. Uh, yeah, and also the, yeah, all sort of wrinkly. But that was a really fun, mm. brilliant shot, that, of them just walking under the water, they're all in it together. Even the little throwaway moment, Stephen, the side characters who also get gunned down by that sniper yeah. in the desert. The woman, she wants to take one last look at India. She takes some of the earth and puts it yeah. in that little box thing. That's right. The shot of that falling when she's killed. It's little moments like that. As, yeah. They do a fantastic job of bonding you with these characters. Even ones that have not even been in the movie that long. And it hits a little bit harder yeah. when something happens later on in the movie. So, yeah, that was a fantastic scene. That really sort of... There was another scene, John, that I didn't clever. really... I didn't appreciate it till after the film was finished, was the 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 race scene at the very start. Yeah. Because we get quite annoyed, obviously. It was yeah, I was interrupted. Too, But we realised, yeah. obviously, Manu's an important figure in his life who's not spoke to in 25 years. We didn't know this at the point. Yeah. We just thought, what is the big deal? But it's not till afterwards you realise. But it's little things like that that... You know, you, you can look back on it and go, that was quite a key scene, yeah. you know, for him. He was living his life in India. Steve, that's almost fucking 96. Yeah. Yeah. They, they yeah. break it to her yeah. that, obviously, the VJ Sefi Parathy character, he's in that sort of reunion yeah. party somewhere, and you see her. That's almost a moment like that. Yeah. But because it's so early in the movie, and we've not got the context not for it, it's almost yet. fucking lost. Yeah. But that's a really powerful moment for yeah. him. He's not spoke to her for 20 odd years. He wanted to marry her. And the fact that I think it's the Lalto race runners yeah. all stopped with him. Yeah. Because they, obviously, they, knew, they yeah. obviously knew him uh, well enough to know this was a, a big phone call. Um, other sequences uh, involving uh, the interview process, which oh, I probably. think was some of the funniest things Fucking I've great. seen in, in cinema. Just totally, your hobby? I thought they, they got Rooster. it right. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> and, and for all the four characters, they all had moments of yeah. just comedic perfection. What do you, you like know? to What did you have for breakfast? Um, parafas. <laughs> Tell me in your own words in English how you go about making a parafa. Parafa. Um, fire. <laughs> yeah. The stuff like that. Yeah. Do you eat parafas all the time? No, no, no. I, I have. She's doing like this. It's like <laughs> fucking game. Is it charades? Is that what you call it? Charades. <laughs> Unbelievable. Brilliant moment. The one was, uh, I can't remember the chap's name, the one with the curly hair. Uh, um, Barry. 
It has went. It has went, has went swimmingly well, but it was the initial shock of, you know, his face. Hobby. It looked, like a, it looked like a rabbit in headlights. <laughs> he did. I was howling at it. It's so funny. I it's says that. You can see the fear yeah. in his eyes. Really well acted by yeah. that guy in that moment. And shout out Cans, obviously. Shout Tell out me about your family. Uh, what, you know, uh, I think... <laughs> my knowledge of my family is very limited. And yeah. the guy says to him, I'm not asking you about Winston it's Churchill's Churchill, family. Yeah. I'm asking him about your family. Just... Fucking great, Stephen. But there was a good speech within that, John. Yeah. The good speech when I think it was the, the, the actual well-acted English guy. Yeah. Um, shout out Khan's speech in that. Do you know what it reminded me of? Uh, it's, it's it's probably a bit off the wall saying this, but it reminded me of Rocky Balboa when mm -hmm. he was in court trying to get his boxing licence again. Yeah. It's this inspirational speech. You know, don't stop people doing what they want to pursue in life, that yeah. kind of thing, but there's always obstacles in the way. Is that That's what it reminded me. Yeah, yeah. When they were in England. Yeah, yeah. that was a great moment. Yeah. yeah. And that was one of the few well-acted English yeah. speaking people in that movie. Not that I'm saying the rest can't speak English. I know Sharuk Khan can speak was, English better than yeah. I fucking can. Well, um, well, we're not laughing at that, but I think in I terms of it. sometimes casting, when they're yeah. casting British actors, it's, it's unknown actors. Yeah. And the police officer, like, People like that. They're yeah, just, the guy in the hospital at the start. Yeah. This is a no smoking zone. Yeah. It's like, you can't do that. They wouldn't even be seen on EastEnders no, you know, over wouldn't. here because no. they're not that at standard. Oh, they would, but they'd be unspoken yeah. lines Back from extras. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like a fucking market cleaner yeah. or something like that. No, that was, that was a great moment, Stephen. There was moments in this movie with brilliant monologues and amongst even the sort of jokey moments of his real serious stuff being trying to, yeah. they were trying to portray and it was delivered usually by SRK, to be fair. And Manu, yeah, the Tapsy Pinu fucking character. I don't yeah. know why I said Tapsy Pinu. Manu would have sufficed. Yeah. She, and obviously when he is having the sort of PTSD, they're all laughing at him and saying, you're a real joker. She stands up for him and says, look, he's not a joker. Go into a wrestling sort of situation and have him teach you. He'll hand your ass to you on a plate pretty much, but he'll not humiliate you. That's a good teacher. There's yeah. some brilliant little snippets in there. Where there's brilliant messages being portrayed to the audience. There was a moment in the film, John, when um, he obviously didn't didn't say that he had to escape the country um, for for his own sort of reasons, and obviously his, his own name. Yeah, he was a soldier. Yeah. Um, being proud as well of his own country, which you can understand. I felt that that might have affected the Manu character and the way she decided. I get her reasons for doing it. But I kind of, kind of at the, at that point, kind of. Yeah, that was disappointing. Yeah, the way she just. I kind of stained the character a little bit for me. Worst um, of all, though, coming out afterwards, running down the stairs, yeah, getting his hopes again. up. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh my god, she's coming back. She's actually going I'll to fall with India. <laughs> I'll miss you, and you can see the disappointment on his face. He's like, fucking I love hell. you in a way. Yeah. <laughs> now fuck off, twaddle off. Now we'll see you in twenty five years when I've got like five days to live. Yeah. And we'll have a brilliant little. Reunion yeah. in the back of a container in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, wherever it was. Yeah, that was a, there was little moments, yeah, totally. Where uh, even later on in the movie, I um, don't know about that decision. Yeah. Obviously, some, Stephen, as people from Britain, yeah, we were picking holes left, right, and centre with some of the location choices. Supposed to be London, clearly, they were in London. They were on Tower Bridge, it wasn't yeah. Tower Bridge, but probably Parliament. London Bridge. Is it yeah. London Bridge? Yeah, that's yeah. a fucking one. Next to the Houses of Parliament. They were in London. We know that for sure. Unless it's the volume, green screen, they weren't really there. I think they were though. Yeah, it looked like it. But the house where Bally's staying and they're all chipping in and illegally living in this house, that was not fucking London. Uh, and no was, one's going to tell was, me it otherwise. Was, it was strange. It was because that, all the houses were very low down. Yeah, there was I no said it looked landscape. like Jamaica. It was, it was something really strange about it. I, I cut that know. out the edit or the reaction, but I said it looked like Jamaica. Yeah, I don't know where it was filmed. I would be very interested to find out that location. It might have been somewhere else in England, but it didn't look like it was London. So. I don't know. It was just, <laughs> just I like think it. as well that the lighting looked, yeah. it didn't look like the UK. I don't know what it no, was. No, no, it, it wasn't the UK. Yeah. Definitely and wasn't. I think I jokingly said, this is like Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> you did, I kept that in. in. <laughs> yeah, I kept <laughs> that in. You know, it's, it's just, we were why, talking. Why it was all a, these English speaking <laughs> actors in Germany? It doesn't make it any a, sense. It's a really sort of poignant moment yeah. with Barry and Hardy and he's talking about like, I'm a joke figure if I tell them that I'm begging on the street and I can't yeah. get back. They'll not want my money. It'll be dirty money. And I'm just, all I'm getting on about for that entire five minute sort of fucking scene is this oh, isn't kitchen, London. Yeah. 
This isn't London. It that ain't you. London. I think it took you out a little bit, John. But going I back to that scene though. with Bally, you know, you can understand that from both sets, you know, that both sides, if you like, yeah. that, you know, Bally didn't want to disappoint his family, but no. what he was doing was he was encouraging others to follow yeah. his dream and, and, you know, you can live this dream. So I get it from both sides. I think his justification was more... Um, he was still contributing to his family while yeah. living a better life yeah. because of him staying in London. Yeah, and that outweighs it. Outweighs anyone that wants to, because at the end yeah. of the day, you're in control of your own Think he said something so about... Take responsibility. If you don't, don't blame Bally for that. Yeah. You know, you've got to, you know, grow up. He said he was earning six hundred pound a week or something. Yeah. He was taking a small amount. The rest was going was to his family. family yeah. So and that's why he wanted to go to England ultimately. So in a strange way, even though it wasn't what he would have wanted, the Bally character was strange in the sense that he was a ever presence yeah. and it was always visible and you would always notice him. But he didn't have a lot of dialogue throughout the film. It was no. very quiet. Um, it was a great for long scene, though, even though it was unlikely when they bumped into him on London Bridge. I mean, this is a city of six yeah. and a half million people uh, and they just so have to find <laughs> their friend right in the heart of it's, fucking it's London. It's the whole Janus, isn't it, from yeah. Friends? They keep bumping yeah. into her. It's New York City. Fucking 20 million yeah. people stay in New York. And somehow I don't bump into Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even though it was a little bit unlikely, mm. just it was a great scene because you could see him trying to hold these sort of yeah. mannerisms, if you like, doing the job and you could see he was fucking overcome with emotion to see his friends in London and we see Manu doing that job as well don't we yeah, uh, yeah. that was a great shot because the um, uh, I'm forgetting his name already <laughs> Sharrett Gans character Hardy, Hardy. Yeah. Um, his plane's flying over yeah. London at that point and then it zooms down it shows you her yeah. uh, performing obviously as a statue there's a, a lot of shot. cool shots in this movie a lot of cool zooms and whatnot in this film I thought technically it was very well put together We've watched, what, four Indian movies in the last three, four? And, well, we've watched a lot more than that, Chris. Yeah. Salar, Animal, Twelve Fail, Joanne, Leo, and now this. Yeah. So that's, what, six, half a dozen Indian movies. I have to say, Stephen, every single one, obviously unique in its own right, as it should be. It's a different film, tonally and sort of genres, all completely different, but all outstanding on a technical yeah. level, yeah. completely indistinguishable from Hollywood, top-class Hollywood movies. So that shows you, and look, maybe not so much an issue for North Indian cinema, but certainly South Indian, maybe not the last decade or so, but we have went back and watched South Indian films from 20 odd years ago, yeah. and they were nowhere near Hollywood calibre on a visual level. Storytelling, acting, absolutely. Visual level, nowhere near. Yeah. Now they're all fucking top class technical yeah. movies. They've got the best of the best in terms best of soundtrack, production, yeah. production yeah. editing, sort of cinematographers these people are at the top of their fucking craft yeah. and you can see it the films are all popping and they're just brilliant maybe not location on this because as I said that's not fucking London but I'm willing to let them yeah. away with that but I but, thought some of the shots uh, were mo great but most of the locations were, were sound I felt yeah um, um, where was it you said the sniper was what country was that I think it was Afghanistan Afghanistan yeah. I thought the scenery there was, was really interesting yeah. to look at and we saw one of those shots on the trailer I think that's what pulled me into this film. I yeah. thought this is going to be a journey we're going on here. And I said that and obviously one of the watch alongs. I mean, this has been a, a quite an incredible journey we've went on with these characters, development of them as well. And I always like that. It's something that Indian cinema seems to do well is structurally yeah. is going back to two periods in time. And they always well, do, they do it, it so again, well. yeah. And yeah. this, yeah. They always so, do it so well. Sort of flashback. Stephen, this is a powerful fucking film. Is, the story yeah. is fantastic. The story of the plight of these people trying to go to a foreign country to better their lives, but not just their lives, the lives of their families, to have hopes and dreams and aspirations, whatever adjective you want to use. Yeah. Just going through the emotional ringer, getting assaulted with grenades and explosions and gunfire, nearly drowning, having to hide in fucking seats and in mattresses, showing you the plight of these people and the journey they are making just to get into the United Kingdom or a European yeah. Union country. You see that sequence at the end, John, just yeah. before the closing yeah. sort of yeah. shot of the, the remaining three characters where you're actually seeing real photographs of situations where, you know, families, kids, you know, parents, any means they can to get into, yeah. to, to get into a, what they think is going to be a better life. And I think this That's is Halloween. something yeah. that people would do well to watch over here. Yeah. There's a lot of really ignorant, narrow-minded people in the United Kingdom who have got preconceived ideas of what 
illegal immigrants are and why they're coming into the country and they're just really backward views that they should be sent back and stop the boats, they need to go to Rwanda. If they watch this and seen that these are human beings the same as us and they are just trying to better their lives, yeah. 99.9% of them, there is always a sort of rogue percentile of people coming in who have maybe got bad intentions, but the vast majority just want to make their lives better. And I think the social message in this film was clear, Ron. Yeah. I think throughout, they may, they didn't hide from it. No, they I mean, the SRK was, does, a, again, a fantastic yeah. monologue. Yeah. At one point where he says, the British invaded us for over, what was it, 80 years, 100 years, they were into our country. They didn't learn Hindi, they didn't have to do grammatical tests. They didn't do this, they didn't do that. We took them, well, we obviously allowed them, but well, they didn't allow them in, but they, they were in the country, unrestricted. Why should we not be allowed to go over there? And even at the end, I think there was a monologue as well about there being no borders. Yeah. As far back as what, like 200, 300, I don't know how many hundred years ago yeah. it was. Relatively recent, there was no borders. So there's a real social message being presented in this movie. And amongst all the sort of hilarity and whatnot, there's a powerful and important message. Bo yeah, borders are set up for the poor. Something like, I yeah. can't, I'm paraphrasing, but I got what the does message. Is, yeah, this, it's yeah, sort of bureaucracy that. and it's yeah. really just trying to restrict the free movement of the poor people. If you've got yeah. money, there is no border for no, you. Go where you want, yeah. You can go wherever the fuck you want Yeah, and people will happily take you. It's all about making the poor people's lives more difficult and that's just a universal theme all the way through Yeah, every country on um, the planet. Talking about themes, John, in terms of production, I suppose we should be talking about next day is um, is, is the score. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't think the score really stood out. I think it was always in the background. That's mm. not a bad thing, by the way. It just adds to the atmos, I think. But there was nothing, like we watched Leo last week and it had some yeah. catchy... Yeah, you know, Leo Das is a badass, yeah. Um, but there was nothing like that in this film. We had some musical, <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't really on the nose, I felt. No, it was. It was quite, yeah, it was, uh, Stephen. It was quite underplayed. Um, maybe not underplayed, but it was in the background. Obviously, if you were to watch the movie without the score, you would notice. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it was there and doing its thing, but it wasn't the standout thing for me in this movie. I don't yeah. know what that was. It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't face, bombastic yeah. right in your face. It's not Annie Rudd Ravichander. No. Or even, even Joanne had fucking great moments in it. I'm pretty sure there was a. I think the because present. of the, the sort of theme. Even Animal, um, I'm, I, Stephen, even now I'm thinking of Animal. Yeah. I was literally thinking about Animal. Just yesterday, when Bobby D and Ranbir Kapoor's characters are fighting on that runway. Yeah, in Scotland. Da -da 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 yeah. Again, it's, it's, it's more to do with genre more than anything, yeah. isn't it? And you've got to be careful when you're handling a film like this where it's light-hearted to a point. And some co comic elements, and then there's a seriousness to it. It's, that score will change as yeah. well as well as the storyline. Whereas in those films, it's frenetic. It's keeping up the pace, and it needs those kind of. Well, well, see, the scores. scene with Vicky Cashel, the score was fucking wonderful yeah. in that. That really helped with the change in tone. It was really, as I said, high spirited, yeah, sort of jovial, airy, lovely score, and then bang, it changed and. They've done a great job of conveying that. Some of the music was very good, Steve. We had to cut it out. We reacted to some of the yeah. songs. There was one joint there where it yeah, the actually... Chub, 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 I can't yeah, do it because I'm yeah. not fucking um, a Hindi speaker. It's a shame that we can't obviously show that, but... We reacted to it. I don't it. know if it was that one or if it was a, uh, one of the other ones, but they, they did the, the musical sequence. See, and then there was an acting bit and then they went back yeah, into the song Yeah, to be fair, again. Steve, I'm, yeah. I'm saying it was underplayed, but there was a lot of music in there. What um, I mean is you don't of, take yeah. away from it. You don't... Yeah. You'll not remember it. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. And that's it was sort of like framing their thing. journey. Yeah, because there was a lot of journeys in this movie that took place over three, four minutes. And you're right. There was little breaks <clears> where they discuss something, and then it get back into them journeying. Yeah. And that was like musical numbers, but it wasn't really like a traditional score. No, it was like a proper sing song kind of musical number that was framing them traveling through these different countries. So I mean, it wasn't bad. No, and no, if you no. take it out, you would be missing it. But for me, it wasn't. I yeah, I'd rather chance. Cinematography, John. Fucking um, fantastic. It was. And I think one of these films, and we talked about three idiots, I think when you're going <laughs> location jumping, uh, the cinematography is, plays a big part in it yeah. because you've got a choice of v venues, <laughs> locations, I should say. Um, and some of the, the shots I thought were very scenic. And um, 
as I, I'm going back to that underwater scene again. Yeah. I thought the way that was shot was fantastic. Very enclosed, sort of. It's like a valley, you know, yeah. or a ridge. It's or almost like Lord of the Rings. It was like yeah. something out of fucking. I don't know where that was. They were when they were going through, and it was these sort of Nemorian yeah. statues. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Was it yeah. Mortwood? I don't think it was Mortwood. I think it was Mortwood, actually. Mm. Was it the end of the first film? Yeah. The Life Moria? Yep. Was it Mortwood? I, I, I can't remember. Uruk Kai? You'll know best. You read the books. I think it was Mortwood. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, but it's just something Both about Lori. that, you know, and just, I, I think scenes like that and the way they're shot is very important and it adds to the tension. Anything. And if it's not shot right, it doesn't work, you know, but. Some of the, the landscape shots, the, the wide shots as well, it's particularly in the Afghanistan Afghanistan, scenes, yeah. Steve, that really felt like a different fucking movie. When he was sniping those yeah. people, it just felt like a fucking western or something. Yeah, that's exactly just what it felt like, yeah. I was expecting Clint Eastwood from 50 years ago to yeah. turn up on the screen. Or see free peel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There was some brilliant... Very sparse, yeah. The sort of journey and stuff was yeah. really well shot. Great wide shot, showing you how small these people were. I thought the way they utilised the stuff in the container when... They were getting put in this container mm. onto the ship. You've really seen the sort of how small sort of human form is in comparison to these ships and how I don't know disposable they could be in this human trafficking sort of game. Yeah. It's just clever stuff being done with shots, brilliant wide shots of these huge big oil tankers and harbours and whatnot. There was some really cool even the stuff when they arrived to England, it's like something out of your fucking you mentioned Willy Wonka. I mean, that's almost fucking Willy Wonka-esque. Pure <laughs> blue skies and yeah. lush green. The stuff, the wide shots of India when they go back, the lush fields. Yeah. The, the sort of temple in the background lit up at night. I was going to say really about the, the location, the actual town itself. Uh, yeah, it felt fake It to felt me. a little like... Um, do you know the, the town that was in... Uh, what was the film we watched with Emma Stone not that long ago? Poor things, Poor yeah. things. Yeah. You know that so where she Lisbon. lived? You know, you know where she lived, her actual house? Yeah. Remember she goes back at the end? Yeah. It was a quite a yeah, it was condensed sort of street. Yeah. And I thought, that, that looks That's like a studio. Set. It's a set. Oh, it's That's it. That was the kind of vibes. Set. Although this was a, a real set, like on location, if you like. It was just, it though? Uh, well, I'm I'd not saying it is. What I'm, what I'm saying is, John, it wasn't like that. It wasn't yeah. like a set built in a purpose-built stage or anything like that. It was actual a place you know yeah. it was in a yeah, location it was a whether place, it yeah. was built for that or if it was an existing one I think it probably was existing John but it did feel it's the reason I say that is because I know the, the Mandalorian the first season always rings a bell for me it was on location and it was a purpose built set but mm. it was almost like a small town yeah and I just get the sense watching it certainly at the end when she comes back Manu and Stephen you talk about cinematography and shots that was fucking clever yeah. And she's in the middle of the road, she's looking about and she's seeing all the flashbacks. That was really good, yeah, and it's that. all happening yeah. in real time. You've got Hardy falling back yeah. on the sort of cart. They're walking down. You've got Suki running on to get the phone and it's all playing out around I mean, the For us, it was two hours ago, but for her, it's 25 years ago, yeah. these memories. Yeah. The other bit, John, that I liked and it was the way it shot was it went from her, it focused on um, Hardy, yeah. who was then looking at Big Ben and getting his phone out. And then that's when oh, the yeah. penny didn't drop with me right yeah. away. It, it dropped with you. And yeah. you kind of went, oh no, or something yeah. like that. I went, oh, don't tell me she's died. You know, yeah. just in my head. Just the way that was shot, the way it panned from her to SRK. And then obviously his reaction. And you know something went wrong. Steen, I tell you, man, I thought SRK was fucking outstanding in this film. Yeah, yeah. Um, we spoke about it. Well, it's perhaps not the best SRK film I've seen in the last year. I think it's the best acting I've seen from him yeah. in the last year. I mean, he was outstanding in Joanne, playing different versions of himself. Essentially three characters. Yeah. Young dad, older dad who's amnesic, I think, can't um, remember, and then the son. But I think, the acting in this is brilliant, really emotive. Yeah. I think anyone coming in at this point into the channel that's not watched any of our films, um, please understand we've only seen three SRK films mm -hmm. so we're not saying this is his best performance yeah. today in all his films we're only saying the we've three seen. films that we've seen uh, you're right John I thought his, his range was fantastic um, throughout um, comedic emotional serious just, uh, just everything just the guy's got it all um, the speech and obviously during the interviews was phenomenal um, there was a moment during that that sort of test where he says look yeah, I mean, the dead are dead, but let's speak about the living. Focus on the living. 
That was a great moment yeah. where he's basically saying, look, I'm with these four people. I'm trying to get them to London. They've got reasons for getting there. And, and even, I mean, Bali, I think it was, at, I think I know it was Suki had a great moment in Vicky Cashel. Going off on a tangent here when he was talking about, think about the emotion, don't think about sort of testing my English. I've got a reason to be there. Please, please help me out or something. I can't remember, but yeah, it was fucking great acting yeah. anyway from me, Saki. It was a great little way. He knows how to turn the waterworks yeah. on as well at the right moment. He really does, yeah. Um, and certainly in that final scene with Manu. Um, yeah. I, we knew she was going to die. Um, it was just the way it happened. I thought perhaps maybe it would be off screen. We wouldn't see it, you know, just to kind of get that sort of light ending. But they dealt with it. You've got to give them credit for that, John. They dealt yeah. with it at the very end of the film as well. I said to you before we came on, I'm not sure if that scene at the very end was necessary because yeah. it was very light and jokey. I just felt it is a, it's a bit of a shift, but we should be used to that in this film. But I get it was months and months later, wasn't it? I'm not saying they should look over man that quickly, but I think they just had to end it in a different way to her death because I think that would have been pretty depressing. And I think I, I don't know if I'm reading into it too much, but I suggested that was probably because it was just to show, even though they'd been through this journey and came back to India, and it was ultimately not the best experience although yeah. it was they, their own businesses they'd done well in London it was still going on yeah. they still had these shysters trying to prey on people getting them to the United Kingdom trying to traffic them that little guy trying to tease them in come here and I'll do you a deal just yeah. to show that it's continuing yeah. this cycle yeah. but yeah but the stuff we managed to and I thought they handled that well they could have dragged that out for another 35 minutes easily but it was unnecessary she wanted to come back home she got to go back home, everything she'd dreamed of. Yeah, the name, getting the house back. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. the name, they actually put her name on it. Yeah. She basically had fulfilled everything she had to That's fulfill. That's exactly it. That's what I took from it. That was the kind of comforting thing I took from her passing was that she she lived her life. She got to see England for a long time. She came back to her home country. Um and um yeah. And I, the I other think, two did as well, to be fair. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. It fulfilled their dreams. The only one it didn't really was Hardy. He proposed to her, she said yes, I suppose, but he never really got it. I mean, I feel for Hardy. I really do. It's yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. tragic when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, is. Yeah. It really is a tragic character. Yeah. Jilted by a wife, left on a horse, treated like a joke figure, gets to London, brings them, drags them to London, ends up leaving for his morals, could have stayed. And then he, he ultimately doesn't get the woman off at the end he's yeah. a fucking really tragic character when you think about yeah. it but just I thought the story was told well Steve and I liked the way they utilised it structurally it was very good with the flashbacks thought they told it in a really quick way this is a two and a half hour movie roughly I know the running time's two hours and forty yeah but when you take in the end credits you take in the intro it's about two hours thirty two minutes well, it's quite a short yeah Film by Indian standards. I think in our first sitting, John, we watched the first hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, we did, yeah. Because we only had an hour left, didn't we? For mm -hmm. anyone that's got a keen eye, would notice my t shirt change. <laughs> yeah, Steve, Stephen, I've not edited yeah. it yet. You've got your hand at the start. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I was very subtle, just went like, yeah. To <laughs> yeah, be fair, yeah, it's not a cut. No. It's very clean. Yeah. The first two parts were from the first sitting. Yeah. The third part is from that night that we yeah. thing with it we try to and, make and it look it was two nights it wasn't like yeah. it was a, a back to back as well part. yeah I just felt in terms of the, the running time again it just went in very quickly I think when you're engrossed in a film certainly a film like this as well when it's heavy dialogue and you've, you're concentrating and you're getting pulled into the story you're getting pulled into the, the emotions of these characters and their relationships Um, it just goes in swimmingly yeah. you don't really think about it. you're not clock watching going I don't know if you've ever watched a film John you're going Oh my God, there's only half hour of us. Oh, I fucking have, yeah. Some happened, of the ones we reviewed you know? back in the day, 100%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Fucking <laughs> caught watching. Yeah, I have. It's funny, John, because Phoenix I think... forgotten. I, th yeah, I think, you know, when we used to... I'd do that movie. You know how we, we'd be preparing for a movie review maybe on the Friday and try and watch the film um, yeah. during the week? And it, it was quite a thing to do it yourself. Yeah. And, and you're watching another language yeah. <laughs> for me kind yeah. of thing. And Ruth's maybe watching another language from the both of us. But I always found watching it alone was a harder thing. I think when you're doing a watch along, it's a lot easier because yeah. you can talk about it. Yeah. You're, you're going, oh, geez, well, you know, you're getting that experience. Um, That's why I, I like going to the theatre and yeah. watching movies because it forces you to sit there. And you get And you don't want with yeah. it. So it's, I find it hard to sit and watch films on my yeah. lonesome to the point where I, genuinely question 
should I be doing movie reviews? <laughs> should I be per, pre, sort of present myself as a movie critic? I never really do that anyway. Uh, not really. But I, I Unless it's joke, Bartek. I'm the only movie fucking Unless... critic that doesn't actually watch <laughs> movies. Unless it's Bartek in interviewing this. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I'm happy for other people to call me a movie critic, but... Um, I don't know if I would view myself as a movie critic. Um, I mean, anyone can be a movie critic. You don't have to go and get a degree in film school to know anything about films. Uh, you can fucking watch something and be knowledgeable and, and know what's a good yeah. film. Yeah. And if you're reasonably competent with a pen or a keyboard or with your tongue, then you're a movie critic. <laughs> Plain <laughs> so, and simple. Yeah. So, I mean, I yeah. said that about it as well. I don't view myself in the say, same way. He, he did say what makes one, yes. Yeah, so yeah, and I say, answer. well, someone who's passionate and knows what they're talking about. So it's interesting <laughs> that you say that the SRK character is a, a tragic character. It he doesn't is. really yeah. have f- fulfilment other than his reunion with Manu and spending yeah. those last days with her. I suppose it's it's crumbs, isn't it? When you think about the grand scheme of things, it's not enough. I don't think it's enough anyway for the character. I think he deserved more than that. Especially when he gave you know, up a whole life to yeah. stay in that town. Uh, you know, I found that, uh, you go back to 96, John, there was a moment in this where Manu uh, and um, Hardy assumed they both married. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, she said it because she wanted him to move on and he did the same thing kind of thing. It yeah. was quite tragic in a way. It's you know, almost that, 96. Yeah. Except the Trisha character did move on. Yeah. Had a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fair enough. Horrible, horrible <laughs> person. <laughs> yeah. That was down to he's just ever back his character. Not yeah, well, it was, his, it was his dad, wasn't it? He pulled no, him out of him. town. No, it was he, fucking him. Did they not pull him out of he town? Did, though, but I mean, initially. he could have went and he went to the university yeah. that was crossing the wires. But if you really we met him eating the bridge, I mean, if you're not that was, invested and really do love somebody, then you make it happen. He I'm was sorry. a lazy ass. Yeah, you make it fucking happen, mate. You don't give up after one go. <laughs> you go and say right now I'm not taking no for a no here it's still a good film it was a fucking yeah. fantastic film uh, Stephen performances standout performance this is not as clean cut as you'd think because I thought Taxi Panu was brilliant yeah. and the other couple of actors were decent as well yeah. but obviously shit fucking can I just says it there it's yeah. the best performance I've seen from him of yeah. the three movies I've watched anyway uh, he's delivering great mo- uh, monologues he's dancing dancing brilliantly incidentally he's portraying himself in two different eras again He's got funny moments in there. He's yeah. doing everything. He's ticking all the boxes. The only thing he's not doing is singing, as far yeah. as I'm aware. But I'm sure he can do that as well. Yeah, and and just mentioning Tapsy as well, John. Um, I can't I can't really I can't argue with anything you said about uh, SRK. So I'm not going to disregard that or anything. <laughs> I totally agree 100 percent with what you're saying there. He was the sort of standout performer because that is that is his film, arguably. Yeah. But Tapsy for me was fantastic. John, you talked about it, and Leo, you were concerned that perhaps maybe Trisha Krishna was maybe under, or maybe potentially, hopefully not being underutilised, but she wasn't, to be fair. And again in this, and you mentioned that Tapsy's character was, Manu's char- uh, Manu, the character, was the heart and soul of this story. Yeah. From start to finish. She looks totally different now, by the way. Yeah. After yeah, stress. very, very good actor. Yeah. She looks a completely different person now. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Stephen, not you spoke about Gitu Galati, the teacher. English teaching guy, sort yeah. of tutor. Birmingham, here we come. Yeah. I want to go to the lavatory. He wants to go to the lavatory. She wants to go to the lavatory. I don't want to go to the lavatory because I've already done it. <laughs> and a cup. He was all right as well. But for me, SRK. It's yeah. SRK show. It's his film. Although he's not top billing here. It's <laughs> that's that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's IMDB having yeah. a, a stroke there. There's no It could be way. order in appearance though. Sometimes yeah. they do that. I mean, Ryan Critney, who, who the hell's in it? <laughs> who, who's Ryan Critney? Ah, that's a strange one. It's probably that old guy I in think, the court. Yeah, I think it's order of appearance. Yeah. Sometimes they do that, don't they? And she it was the be, first yeah. person on screen, to be fair. Yeah. But an incredible film. Glad yeah. we watched it. Yeah, so am I, Stephen. Surmising thoughts here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Shall I go first? Yeah, you've got to bear in mind that when we're doing ratings, I clip these, so we'll make them clean. Yes, we'll make them a clean cut, yes. Um, Stephen really enjoyed the film, as I said, in short. But technically, it was very accomplished. Uh, The story was well-structured. It was pretty taut experience, to use a word that I would have used when I was reviewing things Hmm. back in the day. Really enjoyed the acting. I liked the story that was being conveyed. Uh, Tonally, I had some issues with it at times. Location choices, some major issues, 
But in the end, I really enjoyed it. It was a very quick experience. And SRK is just the man, really. So for me, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. So I don't think it's the rating, yeah. outstanding SRK film of the last 12 months or so, but it's a very good film. Yeah. So, yeah. In terms of seven. performance, John, um, I can't seven. disagree with anything you said there, but in terms of performance, I think it, out of the films you're, you're referring to, I think it's his best acted yeah. film. But it's because of the genre. You've, when it's a drama and it's a comedy, you've got to sort of flex your, your muscles a little bit more than just you know, uh, in an action film. But I think um, in terms of the characters, it was the characters for me more than anything, um, connecting with them and, and liking them, very likeable characters and all separate individuals. There was not one that sort of blended in with another. They all were very unique and individual people. Just that journey they went on from start to finish. Um, I'm saying that word again, journey, because that's exact, exactly that's journey, what it is. Yeah. You know, and it's an emotional journey. It's a, a, a journey of development as well. And friendships, and lovers, and there's a tragedy in there as well. Um, so when it comes to a drama, if you have all those elements, then it's it's it's, it's something that and it works. Then it's something that will remain with you. You'll not forget a film like this in a hurry. I won't anyway. I thought this was a really enjoyable film. For me, it's a seven point five. Yeah, you can't argue with that. I think yeah. it's in that range. I think it's a good film, very good film. Uh, enjoyed it. Speaking of shots, that shot of. Suki, on fire, wow, powerful, and very well caught, Yeah, or captured, uh, but what's your thoughts man, we're done, um, it's been a relatively taut review for us, Yeah, roughly about 50, I'm going to say with that intro, that I forced up, which was unnecessary, because it has a premiere, I know, about 52 minutes, Not I mean bad, I can cut yeah. it, Not I don't bad. have to keep that intro in, I can just put the right <laughs> to the intro, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's nonsense what I've just said there, but relatively short for us. What's your thoughts? So what's your thoughts on Donkey? What's your thoughts on the acting, on the themes being explored, on the technical stuff, on the story, the structure and everything, your enjoyment of it? Perhaps our watch along, our reaction. If you've got anything to share, share it down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts and your rating out of 10. What would you give it? Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notifications straight to your eyes for future content like this. All that's left to be said though is until the next time, thank you for watching us once again and bye.